Hey everyone, I just want to remind you guys that I have a podcast called Karscast out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We just put out two new episodes, one with YMS and one with 24 Frames of Nick, and they're really fun. You should check them out. Anyways, here's the video. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I saw you eyeing out that orange splat in the thumbnail. That's right. Today we're talking about da 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 Nickelodeon. Oh, wait just a minute, Jimbo. We're not talking about the Fairly Odd Parents or Cat Dog or the Worldwide Day of Play, aka Let's Just Watch Disney Instead. No, I'm talking about Nickelodeon side company dedicated to movies, creatively titled titled Nickelodeon uh, movies, which for some reason has movies in a different font than the official logo. Anyways, Nickelodeon movies were kind of the bee's knees back in the day, and I use the past tense because they haven't made jack shit recently. They've made a few movies, but they haven't acquired the legendary status that something like Nacho Libre got. With the exception of Rango and the Adventures of Tintin, the 2010s were a rough decade for Nickelodeon movies. Don't even think about defending Sponge Out of Water, that movie sucks ass! But there was a time when Nickelodeon movies was not only actually making films, but making films people were watching. I want to take a look back at some of their more important movies that not everyone may be aware of because they were in a way influential in the children's movie genre. Obviously I can't talk about every film they've ever put out, only the ones I feel worth bringing up, and TV movies as fun as they were don't count. So with that out of the way, let's take a look. Nickelodeon is known for how good they were at the 90s, and this goes for their films too. In 1997 they put out maybe their weirdest movie ever, Good Burger, starring SNL's Kenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell. The common theme we'll see with these films is that a lot of them rely heavily on hype from Nickelodeon's TV shows, Good Burger being no exception as it drew in a lot of fans through the show Kenan and Kel. The film didn't do ridiculously well critically, but it was a relatively big hit and is today considered somewhat of a cult classic for how 90s it is. So with all that being said, of course I had to mention it. If Good Burger was a hit, then the first Rugrats movie was a knockout, because goddamn did people love this thing. Rugrats was, of course, based off of the original TV series that started in the early 90s, so it was automatically going to do well. But what had people so excited about the Rugrats movie is that it was animation, not live action like Good Burger. It's one thing to see an actor go from the small screen to the big screen, but paying for a movie ticket to see naked cartoon babies, it's a whole other story. It's led to many other popular Nick shows being made into films, and obviously, a bunch of other Rugrats movies. Jimmy Neutron. While it's now become a bit of a lovable meme machine, Jimmy Neutron meant serious business back in the day. Before the Carl memes, before the Sheen spinoff, and before the TV show, there was Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, a movie that is unironically a fun and charming time in my opinion. Such a good time that it landed the company their first Oscar nomination, specifically for Best Animated Feature in 2001. To be fair, this was the first year this category was even in existence, so it was sort of impossible to be nominated for Best Animation before this, but still, it's something worth noting. It was also their first 3D animated film to come out of the company, which is also pretty cool. The Wild Thornberries movie is a pretty good film. In the grand scheme of things, when I look back at this, it's not doing anything ridiculously new, but it's one of the more beloved in the group. I had to bring it up. And that's all I have to say? Yeah, that's all I have to say. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff. I genuinely love the SpongeBob movie. It's so good. I remember dragging my mom to see this, her being hesitant from her brief viewings of SpongeBob on the TV, but she came out of this film actually pleased and turned into a SpongeBob fan. For that, I owe this film so much. The SpongeBob movie is bizarre, insane, and hilarious. It was one of the most successful films of that decade for Nickelodeon and is pretty unforgettable, which is rare to find in a movie based off of a TV show. I could probably make a whole video only about this movie, but until then, I'll move on. To be honest, before even putting together this video, I kind of forgot about Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, and then I remembered, and I was like, oh, uh, yeah. A lot of people love Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, Jesus Christ, that's a mouthful. I like how bizarre it is, the costumes and makeup are great, and Jim Carrey is also amazing, but it felt very empty when you take all of that out. It's a kid's movie, who am I to judge? And it's also been more than a decade since I watched this thing, so maybe I'll think differently now. But I bring it up because this thing really brought it home for Nickelodeon. It was nominated for four Oscars, believe it or not, and took home the win for Best Makeup. It definitely allowed for Nickelodeon to be looked at as more than just a goofy company, and opened the doors for a lot of new original films like... Yeah, I'll be honest, not one of Nickelodeon's better films. This genre of film where it's like, holy shit, look at how many kids this family has, is the definition of a one-trick pony. I think the only thing that made people want to go see this film is that Drake Bell was in it, and this was when Drake Bell was actually relevant and not doing no jumper interviews. To be honest, it didn't really do anything for the company in the grand scheme of things, and the only reason I bring it up is that I just really wanted to talk about it. To the person who comments on all of my videos asking me to talk about this movie, I hope you're happy. Nacho Libre to me is like a distant relative. You kind of love it. It's good in small doses, but in reality, it's pretty dumb and also racist? Oh my god, wait. 
It's not a Libre Racist. Jack Black's playing a Mexican wrestler. Is, is Jack Black Mexican? Can we get a read on that? Is that okay? Oh my god, how do I feel about Oh my god, this? I think Nacho Libre is racist. Anyways, Nacho Libre is directed by Jared Hess, the director behind Napoleon Dynamite, and his quote-unquote so stupid it's hilarious humor definitely shines through in this film. It's the type of humor that works perfectly with Nickelodeon. It's stupid, but looking back at it, at least in this point in their filmography, it's definitely the most, dare I say, artsy Nickelodeon film. It has interesting colors and cinematography, and definitely has a much more mature tone to it, aside from the excessive fart jokes. I think that because Nacho Libre didn't have a lot of typical 2000s movie tropes that these other films had, it stood out and remained pretty enjoyable even till this day. People really like it, people will continue to like it, I had to bring it up. My internet friend 24 Frames of Nick, who I also just did a podcast episode with, you should check it out, has a trilogy of videos on Barnyard, so if you want to get into it, check his stuff out. As for what I have to say, this movie is just weird, man. It was always that one show that I wasn't really that into, but watched anytime it was on TV. To me, it looks like this. Jimmy Neutron brought a new wave of Jimmy Neutron-related content for Nickelodeon, and Barnyard did the same for the next generation, but it just wasn't nearly as good. Fucking hotel for dogs. This movie is ridiculous, man. It's like a hotel, but for dogs. Why is this in the list again? <laughs> Lastly, we have Rango, maybe one of the most respected films by Nickelodeon in this bunch. Not only was it well received critically, but it actually won Best Animated Feature at the Oscars in 2012. Rango is a pretty great film. It is super original in both its animation, but also story and writing. It's essentially a culmination of everything Nickelodeon has been trying to achieve in one movie, and it's done right. Is it a masterpiece? Some people may say so, I personally don't think so, but it's definitely one of the better animated films of that decade, and definitely deserved the Oscar that year. It's kind of sad, because this is the last notable thing Nickelodeon has put out, and it came out in 2011, which is literally almost a decade ago. I really love this movie, and it's one of the few Nickelodeon films that I feel can be pretty respected even today, so if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you check it out. So here we are. Why did Nickelodeon drop off? Maybe because movies take longer to make nowadays and are also pretty expensive? Maybe because they lost a lot of money on a few films? Maybe because their promotion has gotten unbearably cringe? Or maybe they haven't, and I'm just older and I don't know what the kids are into anymore. Who knows? When looking back at their work, I realized, one, Nickelodeon really only makes adaptations, and two, they've never been about taking things too seriously. All these films are just ridiculous and stupid, but when that stupidity hits and gets that ADHD feeling just right, it's a great time. They're all about dumb fun, and some of these newer films just lack that entirely. I really can't believe I'm saying this, but I have a little bit of hope when looking at something like Wonder Park. Don't get me wrong, this film looks stupid as shit and I didn't see it and I don't plan on seeing it, but Wonder Park gives me that stupid, random, and colorful vibe that these 2000 films had. It makes me feel like maybe Nickelodeon can still be fun and original in an industry where originality is close to not existing. Did I mention I have a podcast? <laughs>